Hey everybody, welcome to the My Voice Mentor podcast. I'm so glad you're here. And if you've noticed over the last couple of weeks, I have not been releasing any new episodes. Well, I'm actually currently gearing up for the coming 2023 season. So in the meantime, we're not going to be running reruns. We're going to continue to run weekly episodes starting this week, except instead of it being a full video and audio podcast, it's just going to be audio. So if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, not much is going to change. But if you're one of my YouTube watchers and listeners, you're just going to have to watch the animated audiogram for now. But don't worry, we're coming back in January with all brand new episodes with amazing guests. So the My Voice Mentor podcast is all about people using their voice in amazing ways. It's not just for singers. It's also public speakers, content creators, and really anyone who wants to improve the tonal impact and the sound of their voice. So stick around. There's a lot coming, and I look forward to seeing you in 2023. So let's get right into today's topic. I've noticed a lot of people are podcasters. There's a handful of musicians out there, lots of content creators, but we're all using our voice. And so I think it's a really important question for all of us to ask ourselves, how do I get, keep, and maintain a great voice for my whole life? How do I do that? Well, I want to give you what I would consider to be the number one thing you can do for your voice to keep it healthy, youthful, sustained through the course of your life. Most of us don't even think about this. And no, it's not some big rigorous exercise, although those are really helpful too. I can teach you some of those. But I'm going to talk to you about the number one thing that you can do for your voice to make sure that you have it for your lifetime. Unlike other studies, especially physically demanding ones, the voice is an investment that you can make that you will have for your entire life. My mom just had her 82nd birthday. And if you were talking to her on the phone, you wouldn't think for a second that she was 80. She sounds like a 35-year-old woman. In fact, she has had the exact same voice for my entire life. In fact, sometimes I forget that she's 80 and I'll see her and say, oh, wow, you're 80. Because most of the time I talk to her on the phone, she just seems like the same person she always was. Have you ever noticed some people seem to not change their voice or their voice doesn't change as they get older while other people, their voice changes dramatically with each decade? Well, have you ever wondered why that is? It's pretty crazy why some voices age while others never seem to change. What's the secret? I used to think it was a roulette kind of thing. You were either blessed with a good voice that sustains through life or not, but that actually is not the case at all. In fact, nothing could be further from the truth. You can actually do things right now to make sure you never worry about losing your voice other than temporarily with sickness or what have you. You can protect your voice. And you can protect it for a lifetime. As a voice coach, I would say that should be your number one investment. There's nothing else you're going to use more than your voice. And I say it's perfectly worth your investment. So keep listening. I want to help you. But the bottom line is investing in your voice is the best investment you can make. I could invest my young years when my body is at its peak and that's prime. I could invest in a lot of things. I could become an athletic person. I could get into sports. I could get into gymnastics. I could get into dance. All of these things are amazing things. Football, soccer. It's great to have physical skills. And when we're younger in life, we tend to really love these things. But I've never met somebody that's entering into their 40s, 50s, 60s, still playing football. I don't know people in their 60s that are still actively dancing other than maybe becoming a teacher or instructing others, which is amazing. A lot of these physically demanding things have a shelf life, but the voice doesn't have a shelf life. And we do all these other things. We invest in our minds, we invest in our bodies, we invest in all these things, and we neglect our voice. So here it is. I'm going to give you one thing. This is the one thing that you can do to improve your voice. I think it's going to surprise you. There's two causes of aging in the voice. The first is the inside voice. Believe it or not, 
the quieter I get with my voice and the airier my voice gets over time, the more tired my voice is going to get. See, a lot of times we think we're protecting our voice when we do that. I've got to protect my voice, so I'm going to speak in this voice. Actually, no, that is the worst thing. Even just in the few seconds that I did that, I can already feel my voice drying out and my vocal cords getting brittle. It doesn't take very long. So a real breathy tone is going to, over time, cause your voice to get very brittle. And the second cause of voice aging is trying to deepen or thicken your voice like this. And a lot of times we try to bring presence to our voice and we try to make it sound very deep and rich and we lower the larynx even sometimes and we try to really talk like this. And over time, what happens is the voice gets lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. And it puts the voice in the lower throat, which is going to cause it to age over time. Not overnight, but if you do a lot of talking and you do a lot of talking in your lower throat like that, and you're just talking in your lower throat, that's going to cause you a lot of strain over time. We don't want that. So what's the number one thing you can do to combat both of these things? Well, first of all, we need to establish a healthy compression of the voice. And healthy compression of the voice is basically what I'm doing right now. You're hearing tone, you're not hearing air. The more air that's in my voice, the less compressed it is. And all compression basically means is that the vocal cords come together and they vibrate. Think about it like that old wine glass trick that you used to do where you would try to wet your finger in order to create the right amount of friction between you and the rim of the glass to where you get more of a buzzing, grazing across the rim of the wine glass as opposed to the way most of us start, we're circling the glass, but we can't get any tone. That's basically what's happening with our vocal cords. We need to bring them together in a gentle way, like what I'm doing right now, in order to get compression. And so I'm gonna overdo the compression so that you can hear it. It's this thin kind of fry type of sound. And that's the first step. We want to bring the vocal cords together in a relaxed way, not with the larynx of the throat where I feel like I'm choking myself, but more of this lazy, sleepy kind of sound. That's the first step. But we can't stay there because if we're not careful, we'll go into the lower throat and we don't want that. The next thing that we can do to keep our voice youthful and healthy throughout our life is to get it out of the pit. We don't want to deepen our voice. In fact, you want to start training your voice to come up to the higher frequencies and the higher resonances. It feels a little weird at first. It feels a little sing-songy. But if you actively do that, you're going to protect your voice. You actually need these ranges up here. We don't like to hang out there. We like to hang out here where it's present. And there's a reason why we do. Because, first of all, we don't hear our voice. You don't hear your voice when you're speaking. Your mouth is pointing in the opposite direction of your ears. And so what you do perceive is the rattling of your chest. So we tend to favor frequencies that rattle the chest even more. So we want deeper because then we feel that and that's how we perceive our voice. But actually the opposite is what we need to do. We need to not rattle the chest so much. We need to engage the upper frequencies because those are the ones that are going to travel and bring clarity to the voice. So you're like, how do I do that? Well, there's actually one easy way to do it. And you only need a pet, a child, or a baby. If you have access to one of these three things, a pet, a child, or a baby, you can begin working out your voice in a healthy way. I don't know if you've noticed this, but people talk differently to children and babies and pets. They might talk like this to each other, but when the dog comes in, oh, Oh, puppy, or, or the baby, like, oh, you're so cute. So what you want to do is find a child that you know, not somebody else's child that you don't know. That would be a little creepy. But a child that you know that you're related to, maybe a nephew or a cousin or a granddaughter or grandson, or maybe it's your own children. You can start there. Or a pet. You have a small little dog or even a big dog. Big dogs like to be talked to with high voices. But what we want to begin to do is begin to comfortably engage the upper frequencies of the voice, the higher tones. And sometimes the easy way to do that is to get yourself in an environment where it feels natural to do that. Most people naturally lift their voice when they're around children. 
I mean, you don't want to talk to Johnny like, hey, Johnny, how you doing? How's everything going? Like, hey, bud, what's going on, buddy? Everything good? So what, a lot of times I'll talk to my girls. They're 11 and they have high voices. So I try to match where they are. And again, it's not like I'm not manly. I'm not talking about being effeminate, but just raising the pitch of the voice because it's good for your voice to do that. It's good not to just hang out down here because if you're here all the time, you're putting a lot of pressure there. Now, occasionally, sometimes you need to use that deep voice for emphasis, but other times if you're presenting or if you're giving a talk, you might wanna bring humor into the voice. Well, the upper frequencies bring a lightness, a gentleness, and a humor. If you wanna be funny, you don't wanna talk down here. Hey, two guys walked into a bar. No, that's not funny. You know, that's why comedians always have these high voices because that's funny. So for many reasons, you just want to begin to practice using upper frequencies of the voice. So I'm going to give you one phrase to help you get up into that voice. It tricks the voice to go higher than it thinks it can or wants to. And we're going to go back to the pet analogy. You've got this cute little dog. is still a puppy and doesn't mean to be Omri, but he's a puppy or she's a puppy. And so you have to scold that puppy, but you don't want to yell at him. You don't want to scare him because they, they love you and they want to please. They just didn't know they did something wrong. So you're trying to gently scold them. And you might say something like, I told you not to do that. I told you not to do that. It's scolding, but you're using it in a light tone. So that's a phrase I want you to practice and see if you can get your voice up there. Now, at first, it might crack. And that's usually what causes us to stop. My voice might do that. You might feel like you're reentering adolescence. If that happens, don't give up because that's actually one of the things that causes the voice to age is that we stop accessing those frequencies and they get tired and atrophied. So if you find that your voice cracks when you go high, let it. If you start working on those upper frequencies, it might take a couple weeks, but you'll notice that the voice gets airier and lighter and you're accessing more of it. You're not focusing all of your tonal attention down here. And I promise it will keep your voice healthy for a lifetime. So that's the tip I wanted to bring to you guys today. In the meantime, hope you're doing well. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the My Voice Mentor podcast. I am so excited to bring these episodes to you every week and to do everything I can to help you find and improve your voice for a lifetime. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And don't forget that coming in January, we're going to have full video and audio podcasts. I'm going to have weekly tips and tricks for you in the meantime. So stick around. I'm glad you all came. Can't wait to see you in the future. So have a great week and I'll see you next time.